Hi, good afternoon and welcome to Chocolate Brownies for our last class, our last free class. So come and say hi, um, tell me what you're going to put in your brownies and um, I'm looking forward to making them and seeing what you do. So who's here? I know it's a bit of a time lag. Ray, I can see some of you joining. So come and say hi, I will give you a shout out. And don't worry about ingredients and everything. We're gonna go through those and all of the different options and the different substitutes. And I'll tell you what to do with the oven and everything else as normal. So do not worry. I'm actually gonna put some frozen raspberries in mine today that one of you gave me that idea. So I'm gonna whack those out of the freezer in a minute. Um, but yeah, I hope you're all excited and looking forward to brownies. So while we're waiting for everybody else to join, hi Ria, hello, hello, lots of little thumbs up, that's lovely. Um, pop on your aprons, wash your hands, tie your hair up as always. Uh, for those of you that knew, I'm Nicole, so we're having our last cook along today um, and you've come to the right place. Hi Yolanda. So really nice to see, you're gonna have nice warm gooey brownies for tea time or for supper, perfect. Hi Theo and Becky, lovely to see you and Millie. Hi guys, it's so nice. I know some of you, this is like over our 25th class. So if you've actually done all the classes with me, that's amazing. Hi Hattie and Dora and Summer. And those of you that haven't done all 25, they're all here on replay. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, they're all there as well. Hi Lou and Bailey, you've made pizza with us and you've made it several times, that is so nice to hear. There is nothing better for me to know than you are loving the classes and all of these recipes have become family faves and you're doing them again. Hi Izzy, are you, <laughs> you are raiding the house of chocolate. Wow, we've got a cupboard of chocolate in our house, a whole house made of chocolate, that sounds rather exciting. I wanna move in with you. Hi Sarah and Ella and Asha. Hi Bondon Poncon, of course you can have a shout out. Hi Hannah, you're excited and looking forward to brownies, I am too. Hi Persephone and Alithia as well. You've not done it in ages, that's all right. Anybody that's here today that is new is very welcome. Anybody that's been here the whole time is very welcome. Any of you watching on replay, because I know a lot of you are back at school today. Hello, hello, and you can still give us a shout out on replay as well. Good, good, so chocolate brownies. So while you're getting ready, what I want you to do is go and turn your oven on. So your oven needs to be on, hi Julia, on 200 or 180 fans. So if you've got a grown up and the grown up's putting the oven on, go and pop the oven on. And 25 classes, I know, have you been to all of them? Leo's back with us today, good, yes, I know. Well, I was doing like two a week for a long, 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 long time. Hi, Maya and Nana Ann. How nice to see you both. Fantastic. Maya, are you giving Nana a, a cooking lesson today or is she there as your top taster and going to eat it? Um, so, yeah, so loads and loads of classes. Those of you will shout out, give me a shout out if anybody has done all the classes with me. I think you might have to, we might have to get you to win a prize. But those of you that haven't, whether you're new or you've done a few or you've had a gap or you've joined me in the last few weeks, it doesn't matter. All of the previous classes are here on replay. So you can tune into Facebook and you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. They're all there as well. So you can always get them wherever you are. Hi, Caden and Mummy are back. Fantastic. And Eden and Grace. So nice to see you guys. Really, really lovely because I know lots of people are back at school. So it's really lovely to see so many of you. And we're going to have lots of fun today. I thought we'll go out on a high with chocolate brownies. Then I'm going to tell you more about how you can keep on cooking. So because don't lose all those amazing skills that we've done together. So what I want you to do, what temperature is the oven? Absolutely. So what you need to do is pop the oven onto 200 or 180 fan. You missed two at the very start. Thea and Becky, that's pretty good. Is that the top one? Pavan's done most of them. You joined in week four. Hi, Nicole. That's from Daisy. You haven't, oh, that's so lovely to have you back. You can always catch up. It's fine. Hi, Alice and Isabella and Ruby, fantastic. You did most of them, Helen, but you missed a couple, that's okay. You can go back. And like some of you said, if you're cooking the pizza recipe again and stuff, go back and just watch them more than once. It's perfect, absolutely perfect. Hi, Yvonne and Alfie and Kelly, you're new. Fantastic, that's okay. We're a very friendly bunch here. I'm Nicole, and we've been cooking a lot of us together for the last, what are we now, Thir must be 13, 14 weeks together, isn't it? So, hi, Sophia, and you're here to cook with Georgina, perfect. So let me tell you what you're gonna need so you can get your stuff. Oh, we've got somebody, Lydia from Holland. That's so exciting. Hello, hello. We had lots of people from Australia, didn't we? And we had Sri Lanka and we had America and this time's not always so great for everybody, but it's nice to have you. So if you're on replay, wherever you are, tell me where you are. I've got Emily and Ava and Daisy, perfect. And Yolanda did eight. Right, brilliant. 
So what you're going to need, and I'll talk you through all the quantities when we make it, don't worry, is you're going to need 250 grams of caster sugar. And if you don't have caster sugar, then you can just use some brown sugar, that's fine. We're going to have 200 grams of dark chocolate. Now bear with me, I know a lot of you may not like dark chocolate, but this is what you need when you make good brownies, okay? The pizza recipe is a family fake. I know, we do it pretty much every week as well, it's very, very good. Um, oh, thank you, Yvonne. Yvonne says that well done on my award because I just won an award. So I need to say thank you to all of you. I'm going to say later because the judges were very impressed with all the feedback. So those of you that wrote a review, thank you. Those of you that didn't, you can go and do that. Um, anyway, so I'm using chocolate. Now, top tip for you is I just use regular supermarket chocolate. So you can see it's quite thin and I'm going to show you because I'm going to use some of it and we're going to cut it into chunks. So you don't need to buy cooking chocolate, special cooking chocolate, you can just use regular eating chocolate. Doesn't need to be 70% dark cocoa unless you really like that. Um, those of you that dairy free, the, one of the reasons I like this, this I think is the Sainsbury's one, they've changed their branding. Um, but most of the supermarket owned ones are okay. Do, yeah, it's Sainsbury's, check. On the back, if you can't have dairy, you need to check here that there is no whey or lactose. So that's one of the reasons, you, those of you that are doing it dairy free today can really easily do this. Oh, some of you have got it already, fantastic. So 200 grams of dark chocolate. We're gonna be using three eggs. So we'll practice some egg cracking and separating today if you fancy. Um, those of you that are egg free, just use an egg replacer or a chia egg or a flax egg. So you can ask about that if you need to. Um, then we're gonna have 200 grams of butter, which is most but not all of a packet. And those of you that dairy free, just grab your um, pure or whatever else you want. Okay, 112 grams, which seems really precise, but I've tweaked this recipe a bit, um, of plain flour. Now, if you've only got self-raising, that's fine, but you don't need self-raising flour for brownies because brownies should be nice and dense and squidgy. We don't want them really light and fluffy because that's not what brownies are about, are they? So some flour, and those of you gluten-free, just use your gluten-free flour. And then a little splash of vanilla if you have. If you don't, don't worry. And the last thing is I've put 100 grams of bits so I'm actually going to do a combo of some white chocolate and I'm going to grab my frozen raspberries out of the freezer. Now you don't need to put anything in, so if you don't want to put anything in, don't. If you want milk chocolate, great. If you want nuts, great. Whatever you want. So tell me what bits you're putting in. So while I remember, I'm just, and you tell me, I'm just going to grab my frozen raspberries out because I think raspberries and chocolate are a really nice combo. So here are mine, just frozen, and then I'm just going to put them straight into the mix so you can tell me what you're going to add in. And then in terms of kit, what you're going to need is a saucepan because we're actually going to melt our butter and our chocolate together. And we are also going to do, um, I'm going to use a mixing bowl and I've got my spatula. And then the last thing, some of you may have different tins. This is my tin, so I use silicon. So those of you that have been cooking with me will know I'm a bit obsessed with silicon. And I'm sorry, because I did tell you which one this was, but I think it's out of stock. So bear with it, it will come back in. Oh, glacé cherries, that's a nice one. What's Pavan? You're always doing something exciting. What are you making? Oh, you're making them for, oh, shh, I won't say it loud. You're making them for Mummy's birthday, okay. Can you use sprinkles? I wouldn't use sprinkles, because most sprinkles, what happens, Bondon Poncon, is when they go in the mix, all the color kind of leaches out and you won't see them. So I probably wouldn't. If you want to leave them plain, like I said, that's fine. But otherwise, dried fruit, nuts, um, Fresh fruit if you want to, um, chocolate usually. So I would just leave it like that. Save your sprinkles for something else. Um, so this is a 20 centimeter square tin. Because mine's silicon, I'm not gonna need to line it. So if you've got a metal one, you will want some baking paper in there. If you haven't got a square tin like this, you can just use a roasting tin, like something you'd use to do roast potatoes or whatever. And it can be rectangular, it doesn't have to be square. And the same thing, just line it, okay? You are doing chocolate chunks. Yeah, I'm gonna show you how to do chocolate chunks. So if you've got chocolate chips, you can use that. But I'm gonna show you how much easier, yummier and cheaper you can use chocolate, okay? So I'm gonna show you that. <gasps> Mummy, it's Mummy's birthday on Friday. I won't say the number. Right, so has everybody got all of their bits that they need, all of their kits and all of their ingredients? Have we got any questions about what we're doing? Alfie's doing white chocolate and fresh raspberries. Yummy, 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 yummy. And these are delicious as they are, like, you know, cool, how do we normally eat brownies, or they're also nice warm with ice cream or custard or whatever you want, like a pudding, okay? So you can have them at tea time, you can have them at supper time, all right? And they do freeze. Should they last that long, they do freeze, but I don't think they will, will they? Okay, so we're gonna start by melting our butter and our chocolate together. So grab your saucepan, grab your set of scales, and everybody, I'm just double checking, everybody's put their oven on to 180 fan or 200. 
Chopped hazelnuts and cacao nibs. Oh, you always do exciting things too. That sounds very yummy. Good idea. Yeah, chopped hazelnuts would be nice. But you know, you can make it once today and then try another one. Do you do the same with fresh raspberries? Yes, I'm just going to show you how you can add bits in. All right, so it's fine. Pyrex sticks, yeah, brilliant question, Annika. You can absolutely use a Pyrex dish, but I would um, line it as well, okay? One of the reasons I love silicon most, two reasons actually, is you don't need to line it or grease it ever, so everything pops out perfectly, especially when we're doing things today that have got sharp corners, like um, lemon cake, drizzle cakes, and things like that. So it pops out really, really nicely, but also we do what I call the bang-bang trick, which is where we whack it on the table, and all of the stuff levels out. So we don't really need to spread it. So it's really nice. So don't do that with your glass Pyrex dish, okay? But it will be fine. Fresh strawberries, yeah, you can use whatever you like. You don't have to put anything in. I just thought, oh, I like raspberries. We'll put the, some of those in. And I think that was an Elsie and Megan idea. I know that they're not watching because I think they're back at school. But when you're watching this on re replay, Elsie and Megan, that was your idea. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn my scales on. So those of you who know have got similar scales here, when you turn them on, Check you've got the G for grams, okay? Let's see, where's my G? There's my G, can you see that? And we're gonna put our saucepan that you're gonna melt it in on the scales. And that's one of the reasons this is a really nice brownie recipe because you don't have to panic if you haven't taken the butter out of the fridge and it's really hard. Like this is mine, I've just, actually I took mine out a while ago so it's already squishy, you can see that. But we don't need to worry about that. Salted or unsalted butter, it really doesn't matter. Now a lot of recipes say salted, that's because people believe that like a pinch of salt brings out the flavor. So often in a cake, you'll see it will say half a teaspoon of extra salt. I don't add any extra salt to my cooking because too much salt's not good for us unless I need to and then I season at the table. So I normally buy unsalted butter and that's what I'm gonna use. But if you've got salted, use it, it's absolutely fine, okay? You love chocolate brownies, I know. Yes, we are melting the chocolate and the butter together. So pop your saucepan on the pan and pop your saucepan on the scales. And then I'm gonna cut in 200 grams. So cut onto the table, and it doesn't matter, they can be big wadges. Now if you remember, and you've got butter like mine, it's got those little 50 gram lines, and every packet of butter is always 250, so I know I need most of it, okay? So 200 grams, let's just chop all of that in, just in a big chunk, you don't need to touch it, so don't get sticky fingers. Just chopping this here. That should be enough for me, yeah, that's 200. So pop in 200 of butter and you can see I've not got very much left and you can wrap that up, we don't need that. Little tip actually as well is if you're getting to the end of your butter wrapper, save your butter wrapper, especially those of you that don't have silicon bakeware and you can use it to wipe the inside of your tin, okay? That really helps. Perfect. So, butter's in, okay. Mummy is obsessed with raspberry brownies. Well, Alfie, you better do it for mummy then I think. Stalk is fine, yeah, absolutely, it just depends. I like butter, but I know a lot of you are dairy-free. Now, I've got my 200 grams of dark chocolate, and if you are, you, these ones, the thin ones, that are always 100 gram bars, but you might have a bigger, like a Bourneville bar, and it might be 200, so just check. I'm gonna open up my chocolate. Sometimes, oh, because I've got greasy fingers, sometimes you might find the same. We might need a pair of scissors just to open that bar of chocolate, like that. And now you'll see why I like the thin stuff. Super easy to break it up. Let's do some muscles and just break it into cubes, pop it in the pan straight away. Can you see? So 200 grams of chocolate. So make sure you've checked how much, how big your bars are and just pop all of that in there like that. Let's open that one. So that's why I like this chocolate because it's really easy. I think all of you will be able to do this. But the thicker, you know, like dairy milk that's a bit higher, that's a bit hard. So Bourneville is a bit thicker than this, but this should be really easy just to snap into pieces. So let's do that. Right, what other questions? How much butter? I did that, didn't I? 200 grams. So we're gonna melt them together because if you melt chocolate in the pan, it has a tendency to burn, okay? So I've just got, there's just my 200 grams of butter and 200 grams of chocolate, okay? Just gonna pop that out of the way. Perfect. So give me a thumbs up when you're done. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna heat them, okay? Now you could heat it in, you could just put this in a bowl and put it in the microwave if you want to, but I like teaching you hob work. I think it's a good thing to do and it's gonna be really easy to do. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop this here on my hob, you put it on a low light and we're just gonna wait. And when it gets hot, what's gonna happen is the butter's gonna melt 
and you keep stirring the liquid the hot butter is going to help dissolve all of that chocolate okay so that's what we want to do shall i move you over here let's move you over here and then i can oh, put my finger there that's not a good idea is it let me move you over here i'll hold you so you can see in my pan so i'm just giving it a stir there okay if i lift it up and show you you can see the butter starting to melt at the bottom all right so i'm just going to leave that i'm going to put come back here so i can answer any questions um but that's all I want you to do is just pop it on and keep stirring it because you don't want any of the chocolate to catch at the bottom. The chocolate will start to melt and you want to mix the melted chocolate in with the melted butter. Okay. If you are doing it in a microwave, you just need to do it. You've got a little sort of pulse button, haven't you? It's probably like 10 or 30 seconds. So do it for like 10 seconds, take it out, give it a stir and then go back in. Okay. So you can do it either way. What heat is the hob on? I've got an induction, so I've got mine on about seven at the moment because I'm stirring it. So that is a little, I'm just getting it up to speed so it's nice and hot and it will be quick and I can show you, but it's up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. If it's gas, just turn it down a little bit lower. So if I show you this, you can see already it's starting to melt there, okay? And if you cut your butter in smaller pieces, it melts a bit quicker, so that's why I'm stirring it. Your cat is trying to eat the chocolate. Go away, pussy cat. Get it in the, and not trying to eat the chocolate in the pan, I hope. That would be a bit strange. Maybe it's the extra chocolate. I want to hear more about the house of chocolate, whoever it is that lives in a house of chocolate. I want to move in. Definitely. Definitely. I think we all want to move in, don't we? So, I'm just melting it up. This is really easy. And you'll see now if I show you, can you see I've got like a pool of liquid there. So I always want to just keep scraping down the side so that the chocolate is moving around and not getting stuck anywhere because if it gets stuck, it might burn. Okay, so use your noses, and by now, mine smells amazing. Yes, Mamuda, you put the butter and the chocolate. So I've got 200 grams of chocolate, dark chocolate that I've broken up, and 200 grams of butter in a saucepan, and I'm just warming it up gently, okay? You are 10 grams short chocolate. Absolutely fine, Gemma, not a problem. Do not worry, yeah. Um, Yolanda says, no, the pan. Oh, number, do you mean number of the pan? Number what heat that it's on? I've got mine on seven, but it will just depend. I've got, I used to have gas, and I have just got an induction so i'm learning to use mine at the moment so yours may be different okay so just keep stirring it should start to smell amazing it should start to look a bit like charlie and the chocolate factory so it should look really yummy and glossy and golden and start to smell amazing so keep any pussy cats away and no finger licking you those of you that are new i'm super strict aren't i no bowl licking until we've made what we're making okay but the good thing is, there were, when you've had a lot of bowl licking, there will be hardly any washing up, okay? Your other cat is trying to eat it. Oh dear, you've got no chance, have you? You've got two cats. We're going to have to work a bit quicker, aren't we, to get this in the oven. So as you can see from my arm that's stirring out of the corner here, it's nearly done. Can you see? I don't know if you can see those lumps if I hold them up. So I've got a few little lumps of butter in there. So yours should be nearly done too. So I'll, don't worry, I'm going to wait for you. It's not a problem. I just want to stir it and show you. So sometimes at the end, you've got a few lumps of butter. You want to make sure that everything's dissolved. Okay. And then especially if you've got electric or induction, you want to take it off the heat because it will keep the heat for a bit and you don't want it to catch at the bottom of the pan. Okay. Yours has melted. Yes, absolutely. So you've beaten me to it, Gemma. So it should look like this. All gorgeous, all melted together. I don't know if you can see that there. So once it's done, and just stir it around the bottom of the pan to check you haven't got any burnt bits, it's all loose and everything's melted in, just like that. I'm just going to put this to one side, okay, and take it off the heat, all right? So I'm going to wait until everybody's done with that. So give me a thumbs up when you're all done. Ed's done too, brilliant. So definitely turn it off the heat and put it somewhere, maybe on a little trivet stand, or if you've got a gas hob, it's fine. Or you'll just put it even on electric or induction, just put it somewhere that, where it wasn't hot, because that little area that you've cooked on will still be hot, okay? So, those of you that are done, we're not gonna start yet, but when you're ready, you, you will now want your mixing bowl, so you can get your mixing bowl ready, but I'm just gonna wait. Ah, oh, good, a lot of you are done. Does it smell amazing? Don't go quiet on me today, because otherwise I think you're all licking the bowl with the, and the spoon with the pussy cats as well. Okay, brilliant. Right, do you make a mixture of the egg and sugar? We're just gonna put all of the ingredients in actually, but I'm gonna put the dry stuff in first because it's much easier if you overweigh to take it out when it's dry rather. You finished ages ago, okay. You're super quick today. We, we never leave anybody behind, so. 
Right, so pop your mixing bowl on your scales like I've got here and press it on to zero and check it's on G still. It smells awesome, it does. Melted chocolate is the best smell ever, isn't it? So what I want you to do first is pop in 250 grams of sugar. I know it's a lot and unfortunately brownies are one of those recipes where sugar helps keep it moist, okay? Pavan's done too. So pop in 250 grams. So shake that all in. So that's mine. Meow, is Lou a pussycat or you my third cat? Is that because you're eating the chocolate? Cats are not allowed, Lou, so don't pretend to be a cat thinking you're gonna eat the chocolate, okay? So all I've done is I've just got some sugar in there, 250 of sugar. And then you can press that one to zero. Those of us that are super ahead. It's gonna be patient for us slow coaches. And then you can grab your flour. And with the flour, we're only going to use 112, so that's one, one, two. We don't need a lot of flour because squishy brownies are best with less flour. So shake in your flour, that's where we want to go slow. And this way, can you see what I'm doing? I'm going to show you and I'll lift it up in a minute because I know sugar and flour are white, but you'll see the difference. Let me just do a bit more. Perfect. So you can see I've kind of got a stripe. Can you see there? This is the flour here on this side and this is my sugar, okay? So if I had too much, it's really easy for me to just pick out some flour. It's not all mixed in. And if I put the eggs in, it'd be really difficult to pick it out. So always do your dry stuff first, okay? Alfie is melting. I hope you mean he's melting the chocolate or are you melting, Alfie? It smells amazing, Emily. Good. Um, marshmallows would be good, but yeah, we're going to put them in at the end because marshmallows in the hot chocolate will melt. So make sure you've taken your chocolate like mine off the heat, okay? Right. Oh, my screen says broadcast interrupted. Have I frozen? Oh, that still says lie. You lost me. Oh, okay. Hold on, hold on. It's stopped. All right, let me see if I can. Yeah, you've all dropped out. Let me dial back in once. Let's see if we're back. Give me a wait. Yeah, it looks like some of you are coming back. Perfect. I don't know what happened there. That was very strange because it was fine here, but I could see you all dropping out. Weird. And Wi-Fi is exactly the same. Are you back? Yeah, I can see the numbers popping back up. Good. Okay. So I'm just going to wait for everybody to come back. So all I've got in my mixing bowl is 250 grams of sugar and 112 of flour. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. The recipe said, oh, 115. Yeah, I rounded it up because I thought you'd all think 112 is a bit weird. So yeah, 115 is fine. Shall I add a bit more in? Will that keep everybody happy? Let me make it up to 115. Okay, perfect. I'm back. Good. I don't know what happened there. I know I think a few of you, hopefully, yeah, you're all coming back on. Can I repeat it? Absolutely. Sorry. I'm not sure what happened there because it looked fine for me, but all of you suddenly started dropping out. Um, so I've got 250 grams of sugar in here and 115 of flour, plain flour, okay? If you've only got self-raising, don't worry, just use self-raising. So just my dry ingredients at the moment, all right? You lost me, but you're back. I'm glitching. That's really weird, really weird. I, maybe if, if you guys, if it's still glitching, because the numbers are holding here and the signal is strong, Log, just log out and come back in again and just see if it's your end and I will stay here. It's okay now because it looks like it's okay for most of you and we're back up to numbers. Okay, good. So I'm just gonna do a quick recap in case some of you lost that in the middle. So in our saucepan, we had 200 grams of dark chocolate and 200 grams of butter. We've melted it and it's all lovely and glossy and we've just taken it off the heat so it's not so hot. And then in a bowl, in a mixing bowl, you've got um, 250 of sugar and 115 of flour. I keep on freezing for you. Try and go and log out, Mamuda, and come back in. Granulated sugar is fine, that's okay. You're back, because I think everybody else is back, so it may just be, sometimes I know, it just depends on your network in the area. We've had this a few times, haven't we? But we work it out, it's not glitching for you, okay? So for anybody that is glitching, just turn it off, go back and come back in, okay? Perfect, good, all right. So what you're going to add in here, if you've got a little bit of vanilla, you're going to put in half a teaspoon. So I don't use measuring um, measures, you know, teaspoons, but you can if you want. I'm just going to use a regular teaspoon that I use for making cups of tea. It's what's called a teaspoon. So I'm just going to give a little pour over my bowl so I don't spill it. Half a teaspoon. So kind of you can see there like that. And that's just going to go in there for flavor. Okay. And then... 
we've got our eggs. Now, for those of you that want to practice, I'm going to give you a little run through of how we can separate eggs. You don't need to today, but it's super good practice for those of us that are going to be making meringues and things like that. Those of you in the club, we're going to be egg separating at the weekend. So this will be good practice. So what you do is you take your egg, we're going to tap it on the side of the bowl, tap, 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 till we hear a big crack and we've got a big um, mark like that. Now, the proper way to separate an egg is to put the pointy bit on the top, lift off the top hat bit like that, and you'll see that the white starts to drop, doesn't it, like that. And then I can play a little catch game. So I've got mostly a, my yolk, but a little bit of white in there. I'm just going to pour it into that one. And then I can pour it back into that one. And I'm going to use both bits of the egg, so it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to pour that in now. But it's good practice, okay? Now, those of you that like to do it a different way, you can do what I call the claw hand. So I'll show you that one. So what you do... Oh, but it's, it's um, half a teaspoon of vanilla. So you do exactly the same. I'm going to do this in a small bowl. Tap, tap, tap. Oh, sounds like a hard boiled. And then do the same as before. I'm going to put my two thumbs in with the hole pointing down. I'm going to pop the egg into the bowl like that. So I've got a whole egg here. You're doing half the amount. Okay. Um, yeah, that's why I wouldn't do half. I would have done two thirds. So if you've got two eggs, I would do two thirds. So maybe add a bit more ingredients. Um, you can add one um, and see how you go. Or you can add two and maybe bake it for a bit longer and add a little bit of flour if the texture's not quite right. So always when you cook with a recipe, you want to work with the number of eggs. Really, really important. If you asked that at the beginning, I would have, I would have told you what the answer was. Um, but don't worry, either will work. Okay. Yes. And in the mixing bowl, Georgina, I've got flour and sugar and I'm just and a bit of vanilla. So when I put my egg in there like that, I'm going to take my hand like a claw. So not my fingers together, fingers slightly apart. And I'm going to claw it like a bear claw. Can you see my fingers are curling up? And I'm going to scoop. And because I've got a scoop, that yolk is bigger than my, that hole in my fingers. So I'm going to hold it like a sieve and all of the whites dropped in there. So this is just, you don't need to do this, this is just good practice. Those of you that want to do it the basic way, all we're going to do is tap, 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 make a big hole, put the hole pointing down, put my two thumbs in, can you see my thumbs? Pull it apart in two and the egg just drops down like that, okay? Can you use marshmallows? Um, you can use marshmallows in the mix, but not yet, okay? Because it, we don't want to put it in yet. So keep them to one side. When we do the other bits, you can definitely put those in, okay? So in my bowl, I've got my flour, my sugar, my vanilla, and three eggs, all right? So I'm just going to throw this away. And if, like me, you've just been playing around with your eggs, you want to wash your hands, okay? So, how are we doing? Everybody good? Okay. Yes. So what you're going to do now is we're now going to start to mix in the bowl. So I'm going to take my spoon and just punch those eggs, and I'm going to start to mix it together, okay? Okay. So we're going to make the mix before we add the bits in, okay? So just start to mix the eggs into here. And the reason I'm doing this now is if your chocolate's really hot, I don't want to scramble the eggs, okay? Alfie's put your eggs in the bowl. That's perfect. That's fine. So you'll end up... You can. This is good arm practice. Can you see I'm mixing it here? And I've got organic eggs, so you can see how gorgeous and yellow they are. So I've got a really quite thick yellow mix. So mix it in, mix it in, mix it in. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm not being rude, but I always say check your bottom, don't I? So what I mean is check the bottom of the bowl, turn it over like that. Oh, and you can see I've got a dirty bottom there because I haven't mixed it in. And you can probably see at the bottom there. So mix it all in so we've got no lumps. And that's the first thing we're going to do. Okay. So it should be nice and soft. So for those of you that weren't sure about the number of eggs, this will start to be the test. And also you'll need to bake it less time, Sarah, in the oven, okay? Because otherwise it's just going to really dry out. This is actually a smaller recipe than the original. That's why I cut it down and you've ended up with this weird, uh, weird amount. If you've actually got a chia egg or some egg replacer, you could, you could use that and just increase the egg if the egg's the problem. Okay, so that's what you should have. Kind of looks a bit like a cake mix. You can see all mixed in. If I show you my spoon, that kind of texture. And it should be nice and liquid because we've obviously melted. Um, well, we've got a lot of eggs in there, but we're going to put the melted butter in in a minute and that's going to be gorgeous too. Okay. So give me a thumbs up when you're all at this stage. So I don't want to go ahead for anybody. And then we're going to pop in our chocolate. Should you add the chocolate? Perfect. Yes, you're one step ahead. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour in our melted chocolate and butter mix. Now, for those of you I know, especially the pussycats that are licking, that is not enough. I've just poured that out. Look how much I've left at the bottom. So what you want to do is take your spoon and you want to scrape it out 
so that your pan is basically clean. I'm going to show you how clean I mean. So no bowl licking, you know me, very strict. No bowl licking until we've done the last bit, okay? So kind of like that, then I'll let you lick the bowl, okay? And if it's still hot, careful where you put it down. I'm going to put mine straight in the sink. Right, we've got a couple of questions. How many does it serve? Oh, that is a tricky question because I've got greedy people in my house. So this definitely lasts for a few days. Um, but you normally, when I make it in tins like this, I cut it into kind of 16 pieces. So I cut it in half and then in quarter and then usually each quarter into four pieces, okay? But it's up to you. That it is a rich brownie. Now you can see that I've got, that's why I've done it in this bowl so you can see I've got two layers. So I want to start mixing it until everything goes lovely and chocolatey, okay? Now go slow, because you remember you've got the melted chocolate and butter on the top that is quite liquid, and I've got this other bit at the bottom that's quite thick. So I don't want to splash, I'm going to start to mix it. Can you see I'm mixing in the middle, and slowly, slowly, slowly it's getting thicker. So, the test worked out fine. <laughs> okay, good. Your eggs are only medium, that's fine. I normally do a medium-sized eggs. I know some recipes specify large, it really is not going to make that much difference. Um, if you use organic, they're a bit weird and wonderful anyway, because they all come in different sizes, so don't worry. Now, can you see, it's got a bit lighter. I'll show you my bottom in a minute. Um, and it's thickened up a bit. Can you see? It's still supposed to be quite a liquidy mix, so don't worry. So keep stirring until you make sure everything is mixed in. No flour and sugar to be seen everywhere. And you've got a clean bottom, okay? So, like that, that should be good, okay? And this should be super easy mixing because now that you've used the uh, melted butter and the chocolate, the heat of it really helps dissolve the sugar and get it all gorgeous, okay? So that's what you want to do and then you can pop that to one side. Oh, I've made a little mess there. Shall I wipe that? Let's wipe that up a bit. Okay. Important to clean as you go and clean at the end, definitely. Okay. How much sugar? It was 250 grams of sugar, Gemma, okay? So hopefully everybody's got, let me wipe that out there. Um, everybody's got that. And then we're gonna add the bits in. So let me know when you've done that. So give me a thumbs up and a little heart when you're good. And I'm gonna show you my little tip on how we use chocolate and how we cut that to make really gorgeous, good sized chunks. Because I don't know about you, but I think chocolate chips are a bit mean because they're so small. So I like finding nice big gooey bits in my brownies. So that's why I think this chocolate is good. And I'll show you how nice it is, okay? So, yeah, give me some thumbs when you're done. Don't worry, I'm not going to go ahead. I'm just getting my bits ready. Some of you won't need to cut anything because if you're using like nuts and cacao nibs, you're good to go. So for those of you that are doing chocolate or interested, I'm just going to show you how it is, okay? So if you're cutting your own chocolate chunks, and I do white because it looks really pretty against the dark, okay? I'm just going to chunk up however much I want. So I'm not going to use a whole bar this time because I'm going to put some raspberries in as well. So I might use like half a bar like this. Okay, actually probably my family want me to use the whole lot. What the hell, should I put the whole thing in? Okay, right. On the other hand, if you've got a whole bar and you're chefing, you might want to try one square of chocolate, what do you think? What's the consistency? The consistency, good question, is quite cakey, but quite loose, really, really running off the spoon. And that's because we've melted the chocolate and the butter, okay? So don't worry about that, it's good. Now, when you've put it all into chunks, what I do is I take a nice knife like this, which should be sharp, but not too sharp, not a serrated knife, I find this easier. And I'm just gonna work with one at a time. So I'm gonna put my knife in the middle. Remember, we always cut the back of the knife, put my hand on the top, press. So I've got like two rectangular pieces, and then I'm gonna cut across it again, like that. So I've got four nice chunks, okay? So I'm just gonna do that with each piece, chop, and then chop again. And every time, can you see I'm being really neat? I've got a pile of the stuff I need to do and a pile there that's done. So I'm just going to chop it like that. Same again, chop. Hi, Ibrahim. Oh, that's so nice that you love the lessons. It's not, you've got white buttons. That's also good. So some of you won't need to be chopping anything at all. But I'm just showing you, if you look at the size of this, this is much more generous than a chocolate chip, isn't it? So I think they're really nice. Yes, you can use raspberries straight out the fridge. I'm going to put my frozen raspberries in in a minute, okay? I might put them on the top. I'll show you two ways of doing it, okay? So you can do whatever you want. If you've got um, raspberries, I would leave whole, but some of you asked me about strawberries, so maybe chop those up now as well. So anybody that wants to do chopping, now is the time. So I'll just show you again. Make sure you've got your bridge with your knife through the middle. Put your hand on the top and press, so there's no hands anywhere, fingers anywhere near that blade. 
and then the same again across the top hand on the top okay so I'm just going to chop these and those of you doing marshmallows or chocolate or anything the reason we're not putting them in now and I chop them now is this might be quite warm and if I put too much stuff in now I don't want it to dissolve it might um get a little bit looser but as soon as we put it in we're basically going to stir it really quick get it in our tray and get it in the oven and it doesn't matter it will just melt a little bit it just won't look you won't see such distinct chunks okay so here's my last bit perfect so I've just done a whole load of my own chocolate chunks basically half with cherries and half without because okay how do I suggest it yeah it will kind of run together a bit what you could do is put um you could put some in but maybe put some on the top because there will be a, like an, a gap in the middle you're not going to have a complete line separating half without and half on one side so if you wanted to what you could do is leave the whole brownie mix plain and then put the cherries push them down on the top of your brownies that might be easier to see and know okay um, I've said, so Sarah, that's a good question. Do you just add all your chocolate and nuts and stuff um, to taste? You can do it to taste. I've said about 100 grams, which is a good quantity. But I mean, like I'm using this. I haven't weighed this. I don't know how much frozen raspberries I've got left. So I've just taken these out. If I cut this bag open so I can show you. So frozen fruit is really good. Before it gets too mushy, you'll see it's quite whole like that. And if you've got... Um, frozen fruit when you put anything frozen in here the mixture is going to season it will get a bit tighter so actually for those of you that are doing things like cherries if you wanted to do say raspberries frozen fruit in half and then put the cherries in that would help you a bit because the mixture is not so runny okay um yeah julia if you're putting nuts in that's fine so basically whatever bits you've got i'm just going to so take your finger just put it in this is where you can have a little test and have a taste and you'll feel how hot it is so if it's still really hot Anything that you put in that might dissolve, like chocolate or marshmallows, will start to dissolve. But if it's okay, then that doesn't matter. So I'm going to chuck in my raspberries. Now, also, what you can do is you can push some of the raspberries into the top. So if you want to hang on to some of them, then you can do that. So in go my raspberries. I've just got a few. And also, in goes my chocolate. So this is all the stuff I chucked. I'm just going to wipe it in. I'm going to give a very quick mix just to stir it all through if you're using fruit be gentle because you don't want to mush it up and we want to play hide and seek with it again so that's why white chocolate is a good idea so I should be able to mix it all in so I can't really see it can you see that strawberries and chocolate chips yummy 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 now I, it's so good it is so good isn't it so I'm going to show you quickly and you might be a bit behind don't worry I'm just going to scrape the whole thing in and now you'll see this consistency is brilliant because it's just going to level itself out. We don't need to do a lot of work. Remember, I'm very strict, so scrape out your bowl. Here we go. And this is where, this is what I want to show you. If you've got some things that you want to put on the top, you can just push them down on the top, especially for those of you that are doing like half-half things. Okay, so I reckon I can get a bit more out. There we go. Okay. You can absolutely leave it plain. So if you look at mine, this is just as I poured it out, it's kind of full, but not in the corners. So what I do, and only do this if you've got silicon, is I do what I call the bang bang. So, and it will just level itself out, okay? So I don't need to spread it. And you can see now, if I tip it, it's not going to be the same, but it's gone into all four corners. If you don't have that, then just use your spatula like that and just gently push it. I don't want it up the sides. I just want it completely flat. Use your finger to clean the spoon off so we don't waste any. You can lick the spoon when it's all clean like that. Okay. Oh, I've got two fingers that need licking. Yes. How long do they go in the oven? They go in the oven for about 25 minutes, unless you've made less. So, um... Like I know Sarah was doing less, then you, you might want to put it in for, say, 15 and then check at 20 or something like that. Gemma, how many nuts? Totally up to you. I've said 100 gram of bits. So I've done a bit more today, um, but that kind of thing. In cupcake cases, um, y yes, you can. I would say still bake it in one. If you, so if you've got like a roasting tin or like people said, like a ceramic um, earthenware dish that you bake stuff in in the oven, Pyrex, that kind of stuff, that'd be better because it should be quite flat. So you'll end up making hundreds of very small little cupcakes which will look a bit weird um, if that's the only thing you've got then yes you can do but otherwise try and find some sort of tin even if it's not square rectangular tin or something like that 
line it with paper and then pop it in there. Oh, raisins, bananas and nuts. Interesting. I'm loving your creativity. So the oven temperature, just again, is 180 fan, which is 200 regular. And it's going to go in for about 25 minutes. OK, um, Rochelle says you were late to the brownie party. Yes, absolutely. I will recap in a minute. So what, what, hang on one minute. But it, um, all of the ingredients in the kit you need are in the pin post at the top of the page. And this will go straight away after this class onto replay here and also onto YouTube. So you won't miss out. So sign up to the YouTube channel and you'll get it. Um, have I put my white chocolate in my? Yes, I have. So I've got white chocolate in. And you can see now, if I just show you this, you can see here without tipping, I've got a whole chunk there. So it's not melted. But then this little one has got a little bit going gooey there. So my brownie mix is warm, but not too hot. So that's what I'm saying. If yours is really hot and you put chocolate in, give it a quick stir and get it in the oven quickly because you don't want that chocolate to, um, to melt. Okay. So I'm going to put these in for 25 minutes. I'm actually going to put this to one side while I just recap for you all. Um, when you take them out of the oven, and I don't have one to show you earlier because my family ate it earlier in the week, is you want to take a toothpick or a skewer. So something like, let me show you this. I think this one's on the list, actually, if I show you the one I normally like, which I now can't see. That's why I like it, because it's got a nice big, oh, here we go. It's got a nice big white thing, so I can always see it in my drawer. Hold on. Somebody's put it in the wrong place, that's why. All right. So just a little pokey stick, like that. Oh, now I can't shut my drawer. So a little pokey stick like that. And you want to give it a few little stabs all over and it should come out clean. So when this stick comes out clean, it's good. If this stick comes out with wet cake, brown cake mix on it, it's not done yet. OK, um, so what you want it to be nice and brown on the top. So it looks like it, it's starting to dry out. Um, this stick comes out clean and then just let it rest. Put it on um, a cooling rack or something like that so that it's going to cool down really quickly. But you don't want to over bake your brownies. So as soon as they come out cooked, take them out because you want them nice and squishy and gooey okay so that's why those of you doing them in different size tins if you're not sure maybe put it on for like 20 minutes and have a check don't put it on for half an hour and then think oh it's really dry better to put it on 20 and then do another five or another five but for this size tin 25 minutes should be good in your oven okay so I'm just going to recap so those of you joining us now or those of you watching on replay all of the ingredients and the kit you need are in the pinned post at the top of this page okay um, but just to recap what you need 250 grams of caster sugar, which you're going to mix in with 115 of plain flour um, and three eggs and half a teaspoon of vanilla. You're going to melt in a saucepan 200 grams of dark chocolate and 200 grams of butter. Then you're going to mix that two together. And when it's all done and it's completely, you haven't got a dirty bottom, it's all brown. Then you can add about 100 grams of bits in. So I've added in 100 grams of um, white chocolate and I've added a, a little handful of some frozen raspberries I had in the freezer. My tin, Sarah, is 20 centimetres by 20 centimetres, which is a standard, um, you know, brownie pan. Um, gas mark, that's a good question because I never know that off the top of my head. 200 is quite hot. I think it's gas mark six, but you might just want to Google that and check. Your family has 17 skewers, have you counted? Yeah, the, this is a cake skewer, so this has got plastic, so I can't put it in the oven. But some of my other skewers are just long metal things, and then you can use them. You might have a lot for, like, skewering vegetables and things like that. If you don't have, use the point of a knife or use a little toothpick. Brownies are in the oven, Thomas and Rachel. Fantastic. Right. Should the should you hide the hot raspberries? Um, you can do. doesn't really matter. They should, shouldn't be sitting on the top, um, but should be good. So... Just quickly, oh, that's so nice that you're loving the classes. So before you guys disappear, and first of all, I do want you to share the photos, I just want to say, if you've enjoyed the classes, first of all, thank you so much for being with me. I have loved it too. Um, please do a little review. I would love that. Some of you have seen today, I just got a little award. So I want to say thank you, because one of the things that really helped the judges, apparently, was reading all your reviews. So I would love that, because there's nothing better than encouraging as many of us to cook as possible and try new food. So the more of you that write a review, the more of your friends are going to see it, and the more they can join in. So please do that. Share the page, obviously. Um, if anybody still wants to donate to Fair Share, thanks to all of you. We've done, I think it's about 12, nearly 1,300 pounds now. So I'm going to put a little link on. We'll see if we can get it up, and I might top it up as well. It'd be really nice to get to 1,500. And most importantly, if you've enjoyed the cooking, please carry on. There's over 25 classes here that are all completely free on Facebook and on YouTube. So you can sign up to the YouTube channel and then you know that they're all in one place, easy to find. 
Um, I'm going to be doing some summer classes as well. So if you're on the mailing list, you'll get those. I will post them on the page as well. So you can pop some comments in um, below. It's a bit tricky to work out which of you are off school and not off school, but it looks like a lot of you are off from the 17th of July. So probably from them. And then the last thing is I've got a cook club, which we've just done our first month, which has been amazing. And I know a lot of you here are members, so I'm sure you'll say. Um, and that's Saturday mornings at 10 o'clock. Same kind of style of class, lots of surprises as well. And if you want to join, you can sign up for the month. You can cancel at any time. Um, so we'd love to have you from that. And again, they're also on replay, so you can catch up anytime you want to. Some of you, a lot of you that have been loyal cookers with me for a long time will have got a message. So do check your messages. Um, and we'd love to have you join. There's a separate website, which is kidscookclub.weebly.com, and I will let you know. So I'm glad that you've enjoyed. I'm just going to have a quick look through these comments. Do share your photos and stuff with me. A rectangular pan, 25 too long. No, it will be okay. Just do it for maybe, um, check it, Yvonne, after 20 minutes, just so it's not too dried out, okay? You've got chocolate all over your face, Louise. You need practice licking the bowl. Shall I tell you something funny? When I cook with very, very little chefs, I cook with them from two, and I say lick the bowl. So if I said to a grown-up, lick the bowl, what would I do? I'd take my spoon, and I'd lick the spoon, or I'd stick my fingers in. When you say to a two-year-old, lick the bowl, they do this. They put, put it in their head, and they start licking in there. So you could try that. Maybe that's why you've got a dirty face. Oh, I'm so glad, Georgina, you've enjoyed it. Do I do? I'm not going to say hopeless. You're not hopeless at all. That's partly what I want to do with this online um, cooking club, is... We're having lots of families cook together. But yes, I do do adult ones. So if you want to, put it in the thing below. In fact, I was talking to one of you this morning about doing a special cake. I won't spoil the surprise for a daddy in the family. And she said, well, did I do some adult decorating classes? So yes. So the, the holiday classes are going to be on Zoom so I can see you a bit more. Because for fondant work and stuff like that, I need to show you. But honestly, these recipes are things that I do with my two-year-olds all the way up. And in the nicest way, they're foolproof. So if a two-year-old can do it, you can. So never say you're hopeless, what you need in the kitchen. So tell your grown-ups, if your grown-ups say they're hopeless, is they need two things. You need confidence. And I know a lot of you have got more confident cooking with me over the last 14 weeks. So that is brilliant. And you need really good recipes. A lot of recipes are just not that good. It's not you. It's the recipe, I promise. So Ed, um, yeah, 20 minutes. I normally put mine in for 25. Okay. What was the really question, Martin Natalia? Was that because I said that you need some good recipes? I'm just going to have a little look. Am I carrying on the classes? So these free classes, this is the last one. I've done over 25, which is a huge number. Um, I'm carrying on with the cook club, which is a little paid monthly membership. But as I said, you can cancel at any time um, so that we've got a kind of nice small group where I get to know everybody. Um, so you're very welcome to join that. And there will be some online Zoom classes over the summer. Um, but it's just really difficult at the moment. That's why I wanted to kind of carry on to the end of the month. But so many people are back at work or back at school in different times. It's been really hard to coordinate. So um, this has all been completely free. I've not made any money for this for like 14 weeks. So this is a, I love, have absolutely loved cooking with you, but this is the end of the free classes. So not the end of cooking, but just the end of these. So um, what else did I miss here? Um, you might make a cake, lovely. Yeah, Zoom is super easy. Honestly, I'm not techie. If I can do Zoom, ask the kids. Kids, you can do Zoom. You built up a lot of confidence. That's so good. That's what I love to hear and to be more adventurous. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. I'm going to have to put it in a review because I love that. That's what I like to hear because a lot of people, like you've already said on this chat, a lot of people say to me, I'm not a good cook. I can't do it. So seeing you say, I couldn't do this before and I feel it so much better. Really, really helpful. Oh, you are so welcome, guys. I've really, really loved cooking with you. Thank you for all the reviews and the feedback. And like I said, please share. That's, you know, everybody can do, you know, if you, if you don't, don't want to exclude anybody, that's why I've done all these classes. I don't think there's anybody who's done 25 classes. So there's still a bank of stuff for you to either repeat or go back to. But do share with friends. Enjoy it. Um, you know, like I said, you can sign up to the YouTube thing. So there's other bits there. Oh, thank you, guys. I'm going to read all these comments later. Let me know how your brownies come out. So definitely check them like this with the skewer. If you find they're a bit dense and fudgy, you can put them back in for a bit longer. I would let them cool completely before you cut them. So what I normally do is take a big knife, tip them out of the tin and cut them into quarters and then cut your quarters into pieces that are the right size for you. Okay. What am I doing in the summer holidays, Emily? So good question. I've got a whole load, so normally my, oh, that's nice, Pav, and I'm reading all of these at the same time. Um, normally, my classes are three hours, and we all cook together as a group. So obviously, we can't do that, because you're going to be cooking to, by yourself in your own home, or with mum and dad, or your sister, or whatever. Um, 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to have some that are like I always do, a mix of sweet and savoury. So you might make a couple of dishes for like lunch or supper or you might make afternoon tea. So you'll do a range of things. And then some of the classes will be what I call project classes. So there, like some of you did it with me over half term, you all make your own cake and I show you how to decorate it. So maybe it might be buttercream, it might be fondant icing, it might be making your own decorations, so all of that. So at the end of the three hours, you're gonna have your own cake or your own meal and stuff like that. So that's how it's gonna work. And I'm gonna do a selection um, and I'm gonna tell you what the different ones are. So there'll be different ones that run over the holidays so you can pick and choose the ones you like. And those of you that've got any allergy requirements, you can ask me which one's most suitable, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope that answers. Oh, thank you. That's so lovely to hear Ephraim. It's been a highlight. It's been really such a pleasure cooking with you guys all over the country, all over the world. Um, so like I said, I'm not going, please, you know, I'm here on replay. So please keep coming back, you know, using those post in the group because I hear, you know, see it all the time. I give you guys feedback. Um, and as I said, there'll be stuff over the summer. Um, there's stuff in the club. So for those of you that have been cooking and you're here and you want to join it, I'm going to keep the price the same for you because I would love to have you join. I think you will get a lot out of it. I know you can read some of the comments here that a lot of people have, have already done. So it's great if you want a new inspiration for family meal times. It's great for those of you that struggle with fussy eaters. Um, it's great just to, you know, change up what you're doing, learn new skills. We've done some brilliant stuff. So we've had like um, a chat with an amazing nutritionist, Julia Wolman, who's fantastic. You can check out her teeny tummies page. Um, and I've got lots of other exciting things planned. They got a little surprise in the post last month. So lots of different things. Oh, that's so nice, Gemma, thank you. I'm gonna read through all your comments. So I'm not ignoring you if you've said thank you. Um, Alice has loved it. Oh, you've enjoyed eating it all. That's the best thing. I always say in my emails after classes, I hope the kids have enjoyed cooking and you've enjoyed eating. So fantastic, big clap to all my chefs because you've been absolutely fantastic doing all of this stuff. I hope you've enjoyed. Keep cooking. Um, so let me know how you get on. And those of you that I know have got birthdays and things coming up, um, if your grown-ups are listening, you can give them a little hint. Um, I've put a little shopping list together of some of the stuff that I've used in class that you've asked me about. So if you've got birthdays and things coming up and you want to do that, then point mum and dad in that direction of that Amazon list and let me know how you get on. So if you're doing things like um, bakeware, if you're looking to increase what you've got, you don't need to buy anything, but definitely try the silicone. You'll find it so much easier, especially cooking with the kids. Everything comes out perfectly first time, okay? You are, Natalie says you're the best, thank you. Right, so I can see the numbers are dropping off because I know some of you put it in the oven. So let me know how you get on later with a cup of tea. Ah, oh, well done, Ibrahim. So I'm gonna comment on all of these later, do not worry. So enjoy your brownies, I'm gonna put mine in the oven and I will see you hopefully, some of you will join me in the club, some of you will um, see me over the summer. So until then, take care and um, stay in touch. Bye.